Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Vodawise and welcome back to From the Depths. Let's build where we have finished our orbital artillery thing. Please pardon the crazy people yelling outside, not sure if you can hear that. This neighborhood has really gone downhill uh, since the Rona took over. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so orbital uh, death satellite of doom and what you're seeing here is me putting in a very not very good lamb system just for the odd small missile that gets through or the odd medium gauge APS that manages to sneak up here because frankly it's not very good we don't really have room inside this thing uh, for a good one that's uh, got any form of adequate protection speaking of uh, through combat testing uh, this thing which has actually happened like which actually happens on screen during this video you're currently watching so aha uh -huh, you don't need to go anywhere to see what happens um, I'm already aware uh, before this thing was even finished of an, any number of flaws with it but I pushed through and uh, finished it anyway because that's how you learn in from the depths and life in general is just you finish the thing and then you take a good hard look at it and it's like hmm uh, this thing could be a lot better, but now I know how to make it better. So the next time I try to make an orbital death satellite, uh, I will guarantee you be able to do a better job, assuming that I don't try and be uh, too cute and try and do too many things at once. Uh, so this lambs is like, really, it's an afterthought. And I have um, I have that problem with lambs, is that I tend to stick them in last and it's like, oh, shakes, a lambs might be a good idea. So they've got, they've got way too much armor penetration, and they're continuous, and they just do not have enough power. Uh, and having four of them uh, is nice redundancy, and high AP means they can fire through smoke, and yes, I do put smoke on this thing. Um, but yeah, not super good lambs. Don't do this if you don't know how to use uh, lambs, and for those of you who do uh, know how to do this, uh, yeah, you feel free to cringe a bit. I sympathize with you completely. And the other problem with this is that this thing is not actually very well armored, despite all the effort I put into it. Uh, there is patches in the corners of this thing, uh, which um, they basically don't... Like, they're not well armored at all. There's patches, which is the cram cannon itself, which is only one meter of metal. And just, frankly, that is not good enough. I should have done better. But I did not. So there you have it. And now I know a bit of the next time. Actually, I want to make a... Uh, having immediately finished this, uh, I want to make kind of a better... Wait, 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 what am I saying? I want to make a better version that's smaller, because uh, that's one of the things... And actually, one of the favorite my favorite videos I've ever made is kind of a fun half-tutorial and just half-fun experiment thing to do in From the Depths is... Uh, basically, you... You prototype. You literally prototype. Um, you make a smaller version of the craft that you are aspiring towards, and then you get a feel for it. And then you make the same thing at multiple sizes, which is, uh, I think, a very good way of uh, designing builds. Because the one time I did this, I almost by accident created um, one of the better battleships I've ever made. Like, I'm not perfect, long way from perfect, and it was... Uh, it was some time ago that I made it, but like, um, what the hell was it called? Old Reliable, I think, is uh, the name it actually ended up with. I actually ended up using the thing in a campaign, and I didn't actually expect to be able to do that. Um, the Wood Neater uh, Canoe, a campaign playthrough of Neater uh, that I went through. And the thing did very well, actually. Like, it was for the longest time before I made something bigger and meaner, one of my uh, bigger and better ships just in that campaign. It was fantastic. And it only got built because I made a small little canoe, and then a medium-sized canoe, and then a really big one. And having kind of gotten my eye in with the, uh, the small one, I could do a good job. And this is where we test the laser defense, and as you can see, it is really not adequate enough uh, to deal with uh, a godly uh, level uh, lightning hoods craft because they are excessive and I hate them. Um, it's a sad fact that uh, lasers... Uh, lasers are... I don't know. I'm, like, I'm okay with lasers, but I really do not like uh, craft uh, 
which are just, you know, have giant instant death lasers because they are just instant death. Like, they can do so much damage before the smoke even triggers and, like, there's nothing you can do about it. This is fine, though. Like, this thing has lasers which are kind of, like, not incredibly strong, but they can cut blocks off and stuff like that. And really, I just wanted to see if this thing could handle some maybe low, maybe medium strength lasers, so I don't have to instantly panic if uh, bad things happen. But yeah, this kind of uh, orbital satellite thing, this topsider, uh, they really don't do well against anything that can aim a laser straight up, because um, more than armor, they're evasive. And this thing, well, thanks to the steam engines, I just kind of uh, duct tape to it. It moves at almost 100 meters per second at top speed, so smoke doesn't actually do that much. So... Really not the best thing to use against any kind of laser craft, and uh, you can tell that we're nearing the end of the whole building process here because this is just me uh, kind of uh, keeping an eye on how well uh, the cram cannon is doing and just, I don't know, combat testing. Whenever I feel like just blowing things up, I call it combat testing, and then that's my excuse. Also, I just wanted to see what the lasers would do to this, and uh, they don't really do much because their field of fire is very low. They're really just there uh, to shoot down small things that are fast enough uh, to catch up with the main satellite and then zap them from above, pretty much. And we... That's a beautiful thing about uh, these uh, very frag-heavy uh, cram cannons is because those fragments just whistle straight through armor. They're not super good against anything... Um, well, there goes that, that thing, the Colom, I think it's called. It was literally just on screen, uh, the name, and I do not remember what it was. And here we have the fun task of the thing that... This is... if Here's one thing to take away from this. It's just... Um, when you're placing your weapons, uh, do uh, put them in a weapon category. Because I always feel like such a dingus um, having to do that afterward. Uh, which is probably more work, actually. It's just... You might not think you need it, but I tend to f always find myself, when playing campaigns, I always find myself needing to take manual control of at least one weapon system, like, every so often. It's just useful. It's just useful and forward thinking and cool. And uh, all the cool kids are doing it, and so you should too, except disregard that advice, because uh, because the cool kids are doing it is never a good idea uh, to do anything. Or at the very least, it's not a wise idea. Oh look, hornet's nests. Uh, I wanted to test out the lambs, but as it turns out, uh, this thing flies too high for the hornet's nests uh, to even fire at. So, I decide to really put this thing through its paces and spawn a spectre. And um, this, uh, it's always nice uh, when you um, kind of overdo uh, the act of defense on something and it's, well, well, there, there it goes. There's large missiles mixed in there. Uh, but, um, yeah, just the counter-missiles managed to do it all on their own. So now we're seeing if uh, we can handle three Spectres, because I just really want to see what the Lambs does. Uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't do much, because anything that can get through uh, this missile barrage... Um, well, the Lambs doesn't really do anything, really. You can see it zapped maybe a few uh, small missiles, but it couldn't really do any better than that. And that's just me checking, like, all right, so pound for pound, is this thing uh, as good as the Spectre? And no, no, it is not. It is not, and that's silly. And this is now we're testing against the Great White. And this is interesting, because the Great White is actually a good thing to test uh, missile interceptors against, because it spams crams and huge missiles. So this is, uh, this is a fun test. How many small interceptors does it take? Uh, to deal with a great white and well cram cannon does help by shooting things dead already and there's one huge missile and there's the second one and oh uh oh there's a third one just damaged enough and that one ran out of fuel and so did that one so in this particular case it was this uh, satellite speed that enabled it to uh, survive that and not the missile interceptors which is interesting and then you've got a problem, because then the things uh, don't go for the ones coming at them, they go for the ones that are out of fuel. So that's one. That's... okay, I decided to go look at this instead. 
We... And that didn't do much. Although it did kind of, I think, uh, yep, right there, you can see, yep, there's some missiles disabled. And, but we got a problem. Uh, the problem looks like that. Uh, this thing is a fat thing with a thin hole. And basically it can't really go mano y mano with a great white, which is disappointing. Disappointed. So at this point we're improvising. We're being like, okay, so how do we do this? And um, in a number of craft uh, that I've been ma that I've made and like messed around with, I find that having a mix of different interceptor sizes actually works kind of well because the small interceptors you just have sheer volume and rate of fire, and then with medium interceptors uh, you have. Uh, you have more, like, more eff effective damage. They can take out bigger missiles a lot better. And now, I get distracted and I decide, you know what we really need? We need a proper command center up on here. Up in here, up in here. And, um, it's perhaps not the most, uh, it's perhaps not the sexiest command center you've ever seen. Uh, for the laser doom satellite. But uh, it will do, it will do. It's weird, I do weird aesthetic things um, this time. And of course you can't really do a proper circle or square or whatever. So I'm just, this is, this is the deco point. This is like really towards the tail end of the build. You're like, hmm, how do we do? That looks not great. Um, I think I need to go and reinstall the, uh, what's it? the more slopes mod um, again because they have uh, spheres in there which will be really great uh, for mimic use although uh, the CPU does chug uh, when that happens and now we try it with a glass pole like that and that looks a little weird it looks I don't know what that looks like it doesn't look good so yeah that's uh yeah this is all slightly interesting Slightly interesting and weird. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum -dum. Yeah, messing around with the mimics, like, ooh, I really have to uh, once again thank uh, the person who told me. Who was it? I think it was someone on stream. Driver, maybe? Um, who is a regular viewer. Hi, Driver, how's it going? Uh, but, um, like, yeah, Control Shift X is a shortcut for. Mimics, and I think I just did it on screen right there. Did I? I think I did. I wasn't looking. I was looking at my thumbs. Um, trying to remember things. It didn't work very well. And there, sanity prevails, and it's far more of a cockpit. And I will never get tired of uh, giggling uh, at uh, saying cockpit. It is the pit uh, where the you-know-what goes. Hehehe. <laughs> and messing around with camo now. And, um... Camo doesn't feel right for something that hangs around in space, so I end up painting this thing uh, similar to a space shuttle. And actually, now I think about it, I didn't even bloody test it against the Great White again with the medium-sized missiles. Or did I? I didn't. How long is this video now? Maybe I did, I don't know. I tested against something. And so here is the part of the video which um, a lot of people find devastatingly unsexy to do, and that's painting. Uh, my inner artist likes painting, it's just, I don't know, it's the, it feels like a reward after a hard day's building, you get to paint the thing. And I know in real life, um, uh, painting is just more hard work, and that's probably why people don't like it. I don't, like, say in the comment section what your favorite part of building a thing in From the Depths is, because I don't really have a favorite, I, th I just like, um, what do I really like? I like shaping the hull. And I know that sounds weird considering I usually do very simple hulls. Um, but I also like painting. Like the feeling like, yay, the thing's pretty much done. And now I can make it pretty. Um, as much as I make things pretty. I am not a particularly aesthetic animal. I don't do a pretty the ways uh, some people do. But that's okay. I make things which are pretty enough for me. The rule of pretty is that, um, as far as the video games end from the depths is concerned, um, is uh, you should be happy to look at it. And if you are, then it's good. And if it's not, then you must fix it, dear Henry. Or, or dear Liza. 
Dear Henry, dear Eliza, there's a hole in my bucket. Okay, so... Yeah, this is, this is me just rambling while past me uh, figures out the paint job here. So for those of you who know how spacecraft actually work, and given that I am well aware of just how uh, clever and knowledgeable uh, people who watch this channel is, yes, I did shamelessly flatter you just now, and I regret nothing! Um, people will probably tell you exactly why uh, space shuttles and things like that are painted the way they're painted, or tiled, I should say. Um, and why there's the white on top and the black beneath and so on and so forth. And uh, I probably didn't do it right. Uh, but speaking of doing things right, I love the paint tool. I don't remember who was it who it was who told me about the paint tool, but it has made painting so much easier, so much quicker. Look at this! I'm just running around spray painting everything. Problem there isn't like uh, painting being too slow, it being too fast. My brain can't keep up with this amount of painting. Paint, 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 paint. Which just reminded me that apparently Microsoft Paint isn't going to be a thing uh, anymore. It's going to either not be a thing at all, or it's going to be replaced with something else. I'm like, oh, But I like Microsoft Paint. It's very simple. Like, I use GIMP, actually, for thumbnails and art and stuff like that. And... I re there probably is a way to do it, to be perfectly honest with you. I think there is a way uh, just to have basic shapes. In fact, I should try that. I should see if I can't do some basic brushes. And this is me now me experimenting. It does this look good in black. It's a silly question. Everything looks good in black. Uh, but, uh, but, things, but sometimes you want some white in there as well. You can actually... Random thought, I know. There are black wedding dresses for sale online. How do I know this? I do not know. I honestly don't remember how I came across that. But yeah, black wedding dresses. And it's like, ooh. Which actually makes sense a little bit. Um, I think in days gone by, uh, in Europe actually, or at the very least in France, uh, white was the color of mourning, not black. It's really only uh, Queen, uh, Queen Victoria uh, who wore black. Uh, that really started the whole black is for funerals thing. Or black is for emos or stuff like that. Or stuff like that. Because, um, I don't know, it's just white was the color of mourning. White was the color of death. Presumably because, you know, it's like winter. Like snow, things die, stuff like that. And black is compost, I guess. I don't know. I don't know things. I'm just a little YouTuber in a very big world. Um, but yeah, so, um, how the hell did I get on that? Oh yeah, so it's like white wedding dresses are actually more recent uh, than you might think. And they're kind of weird, actually. Like, I mean, the symbolism has changed. That's the thing with symbolism. Symbolism is rubbish. It's nonsense. It's not real. People just make it up. They just make it up and then they get away with it. And it kind of annoys me, I suppose. But yes, like, I don't know, the, the older and grumpier I get, the less tolerance I have for things which are not objectively real, which I guess is better than the other way around. You don't want to get older and just be like, start to think that things that aren't real are. So yeah. Um, no, don't forget. Please don't forget. No, what do I... Yes! I immediately got anxious and thought he was going to... I thought he, meaning me, of the past, uh, was about to mess things up. Was about to miss that spot. That would have been terrible. That would have made me very uh, upsetty in my spaghetti. And there we fixed the munition wall as a little bit. And yeah. It's, I still haven't named this thing, by the way. Um, I have read all the name suggestions that have been posted on previous videos. Uh, but it's not too late. I don't know if this thing will ever be used seriously in a campaign or not. Uh, but, ooh, orange highlights. That's cow, yes. But yeah, if it does, like, it does need a name. It very much needs a name. Sometimes it's very, it's fascinating, the parallels um, uh, between uh, building craft in front of the depths and, like, real life um, a development of vehicles and military technologies and stuff like that. It's like, so often so, it's like, just, 
you spend so much time mucking around in the, de in the designer, just learning stuff, just figuring out what works well. And then you play the campaign, and then you suddenly realize you're unprepared, and so you get back into the designer, and you design things, like, according to your actual needs, which very much uh, is parallel uh, to... Uh, real life is like all right when there's not a war on and like the military industrial complex just kind of trundles on and Designs things that they think might be useful in the future and then the war actually happens and like oh no Oh, no, we weren't prepared after all it would have been worse if we hadn't done the, all the R&D But like we're still not prepared and so then they design things which are useful and Like from the depths is like that as well. It's like I'm here. I am designing this doom satellite and learning a lot as I go, R&D process. And then, if I was to use this in a campaign, um, or even, like like I said earlier, I'm very much aware of this thing's flaws now, or at least some of them. And, yeah, it's like learning process, R&D, learning stuff, learning stuff. And then, when I actually need a orbiting Doom satellite, um, I will be able to do uh, a much spiffier job of it. I will be able to do absolutely great well I mean better let's not toot my own horn too much I will deafen people oh yeah and I thought you know a space thing you know what would really be a smart idea satellite dishes on top to I don't know look cool I guess so yeah this is, uh, and I just did the same thing like twice in a row and now you've got to figure out how to angle this thing so it doesn't look weird so this is, uh, this is uh, weird Weird. It's weird, I say. This is a lot of uh, mimic work. Uh, deco, I guess you could uh, call it for short. It's just like, it's just rotating things to make sure that they look right from all angles. In this particular case, um, I'm not doing a very good job with me brain at uh, rotating it. There I get it, there I get it. And just up a little bit. Yay! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. Copy all and head over there. Mainly, I just want to cover the exhaust, which I actually don't end up doing. So, yeah, and like the smarter thing to do would just be to mimic stuff uh, onto the exhaust so they don't look as obvious. And then we got to put the uh, pole in the satellite dish. Incidentally, uh, there's good reasons why when satellites are launched into orbit, um, the actual satellitey dish point to the thing uh, that's all folded up inside a capsule and stuff like that because ye gods a satellite dish would be drag immeasurable it would be such a drag <laughs> yeah so anyway uh, time to randomly shout out a channel that's much bigger than mine if you have not watched uh, Kurt's Gesagt videos you are missing out they're great. I learned so much from them and rewatched them just to listen to the soundtrack. Ooh! Uh, randomly shouting things out. Kurtz Kazakht, um, the soundtrack for their videos is available on Spotify and SoundCloud, I believe. It is great background music to do stuff to. I'm always on the lookout for uh, stuff you can uh, uh, listen to in the background while you're, well, doing From the Depths, for instance. And Epic Mountain, uh, which is the guys who do uh, music uh, for Kurzgesagt, they're really good. It's like you listen to that and think like, wow, this was made for an internet show, and it's really good. The production value is amazing. And I think that's it, actually. It's like, all right, I, I'm a bit of a fusspot with here. It's like, but how do we arrange the, uh, the fire control thingies? And the answer is, you don't. You stick it like that. And that looks like it, really. Just save it there, just save it there, and that turns off. It's interesting. It's weirdly reminiscent of um, a lot of my older craft, the color palette I've just kind of fallen into. It's just kind of, you know, that, uh, that white, uh, that black, and that kind of uh, orange trim. Like, if you go way, way back uh, to my earlier videos, you'll see I do a lot of stuff like that. And these days I'm just lazy and I slap camo on it and that's a day. But at any rate, uh, that is this orbital um, cram artillery thing. It is done and dusted, just needs a name. Uh, do uh, suggest names in the comments, I would love to hear them. And thank you all so much for watching and sticking with me uh, throughout this whole building process. 
Uh, we'll have to test this thing on various things uh, to see how it does. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.